Okay, it's Yay for Yarn, and this is part two of how to crochet an easy geometric backpack. If you haven't already seen part one of this tutorial, make sure you go check that out first, because in part one, I showed you how to crochet all of the triangles and assemble them to create the main portion of the bag. And in this section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet the upper portion of the bag, how to make the drawstring, and how to crochet and attach the straps. So let's get started. So to do that, I've got some of my extra yarn. I'm going to start with black, and I'm going to start crocheting around the top edge of the bag. So I have a um, crochet hook, the same one I used for the triangles. And what I'm going to do here is find a black triangle because it matches my black yarn. And when you crochet over your tail, it blends in better if it's the same color. And I'm going to insert my hook into the very, very corner of that black triangle. And we're going to be working across the foundation chains of all these triangles. So because uh, we chained 16 stitches to start each triangle, and one of those stitches was extra in the sense that the last two chains count as one single crochet, so we had a total of 15 stitches in one row. We're going to work 15 single crochet across each triangle. So to start out, I'm going to, I've inserted my hook into the very corner. This is the very first um, chain in the corner. I'm going to pull up a loop of yarn and chain one. That's going to count as my very first stitch. So now I'm going to keep working across this triangle and work 14 more single crochets into the foundation chain of the triangle all the way across until I get to the other corner. And you can't see it very well at the moment because this one is black, but it will show up better when I get to the next triangle. So I'm going for a total of 15 single crochets across each triangle. And that very first starting chain, the chain one at the beginning, is counting as my first single crochet. And working into the bottom of a foundation chain is not difficult at all. You just have to look for the little lengths of yarn that are um, the, the loops that go across the edge. So I am just about to the corner. There's my corner. I want to make sure I'm going into a secure place where it's not just pulling a little bit of yarn here. And I'm going to count. I've got to make sure I've got a total of 15 stitches, including my first chain. So I have, there's the chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I have 15 stitches across that black triangle. Now we're going to move to the gray triangle. You can see the little blue point right here, but that is not supposed to be um, part of the edge that we're working into. So we're going to ignore this little place where the, uh, the point of the blue triangle is, and we're going to move to the gray triangle. And again, we're going to insert into the very first chain, the very corner of that gray triangle. I'm still crocheting over my tail. And we're going to work a total of 15 single crochets across the gray triangle. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, and then my 15th one is going to be in this very corner. And the corners of these triangles should be a little tight. Um, that's a good thing. So you might have to force your hook through it a little bit. But as you can see, we are working into the foundation chain because these triangles are upside down. We're working into the foundation chains of these triangles. So I'm going to continue working 15 single crochet across the foundation chain of each triangle all the way around, ignoring the little points in between of the triangles that are pointing up, and I will show you what it looks like when I get back to the end of my row. All right, so I have made it all the way around, 
and I'm back here at the beginning where I started. This is my first black triangle that I've crocheted across. And I'm going to slip stitch in that very first chain from the beginning where we chained one and then we did 14 single crochets in this triangle. That first chain counts as a stitch. I'm slip stitching into that chain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and I'm going to single crochet all the way back around this same row we just did again in the other direction. So I'm just going to single crochet all the way around and then we will slip stitch the end of the round together when we get back to the beginning. But I'm just going to um, make a total of two rows here of this black just to give a, a sharp defined line or a stripe where the triangles stop and the uh, section where the drawstring will be begins. All right, so I've made it all the way back around. I'm now going to slip stitch in the very first chain from the beginning of the row. And I do want to mention that both this row that we just did and the one before it should each have 360 stitches total around the whole row, including the chain, the beginning chain one where you count that as a stitch. So I'm going to cut leaving about a six inch tail and I'm going to tie off and now I'm going to switch colors. So now I'm going to turn the bag over so that the outside is again facing me and right where I just tied off I'm going to insert my hook and pull up the gray yarn. Now we need a starting chain. So you can do one of two things. If you are more comfortable with this, then you can just chain three and count that as your first double crochet because this row is gonna be worked in double crochet. If you are comfortable with a chainless starting double crochet, which is my preference, then you can do that. But the, uh, the chain three will be sufficient if you're not comfortable with a chainless starting double crochet. So to do a chainless starting double crochet, you're going to stretch the loop on your hook out until it's about the height of a double crochet. Hold on to it at the top with your finger. Wrap your hook around that double strand of yarn so it looks like you've got a loop and a yarn over. And then you're going to insert your hook into the stitch pull up, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now that's my uh, preferred method for starting a row of double crochet. If you're not comfortable with that, again, just chain three instead. But we're going to count this as our first stitch, or if you were using the chain three, you would count that as your first stitch instead. And we're going to work a whole row of double crochet. And the reason we're switching from single crochet to double crochet is because for one, double crochet is faster. And also, this part of the bag that's worked in single crochet, we want it to be sturdy, we want it to hold things well, and we don't want to have big gaps in it where uh, things could fall out. Little um, small items that might work their way through the holes in double crochet. But up here, this section right here is going to be where we cinch our bag closed and to be able to fully cinch it shut you're going to need a fabric that's more pliable and flexible and um, has more give in it. So we're going to be working these next few rows in double crochet to give us that pliable fabric we need to be able to cinch through. So just as we did with the single crochet rows before this, we're just going to work in double crochet all the way around until we get to the beginning of the round again where we can join it together. So I'm just going to keep working my double crochets all the way around and then I will show you what it looks like when I get back around to the beginning of my row. All right, so I've made it all the way back around to the beginning of my row, and I'm going to 
slip stitch in the top of my chainless starting double crochet and if you used a chain three instead of the chainless starting double crochet you would slip stitch into the top of your chain three so I'm going to repeat the row I just did two more times for a total of three rows of the double crochet so I'm going to turn my work so that the inside of the bag is facing me now and I'm going to do basically the same thing I just did I'm going to work my chainless starting double crochet or chain three if you prefer and just double crochet all the way around and then slip stitch in the top of your either your chainless starting double crochet or your chain three and I'm going to continue to do that for a total of three double crochet rows as I mentioned a few minutes ago all right I've got three rows of double crochet so now I'm going to make the row of holes that we will feed our drawstring through so to start that row I'm going to turn my work so that the inside of the bag is facing me I'm going to start with my chainless starting double crochet or you can use a chain three if you would rather And what we're going to be doing is making evenly placed holes all around this row. And to do that, since we're counting this first one as a stitch, and if you had done a chain three here instead of a chainless starting double crochet, it would also be counted as a stitch. So I'm going to work a double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. Then I'm going to chain four and skip four. So I'm gonna skip the next four stitches. And when I go to work the next stitch, I'm gonna work it right here. So now I'm going to, because that was our first um, repeat of that, because this first one is a, uh, a starting stitch. What we're gonna do here is, the repeat is going to be working 11 double crochets, chain four, skip four. So I'm gonna start in the next stitch Work 11 double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, chain four, and skip four. So now I'm gonna work 11 more double crochets, chain four and skip four, and I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around until I get back to the beginning of my round. All right, I'm back to the beginning. I've got my 11 double crochet, I've chained four, I'm gonna skip four, one, two, three, four, and slip stitch into my starting stitch, whether it be a chainless starting double crochet or a chain three. So you should still have a total of 360 stitches, counting each chain as one stitch, and you should have a total of 12 holes. So now what we're going to do is turn the work, and we're going to work into all of these holes. So I'm going to start with a chainless starting double crochet, or if you want, you can use a chain three. And this first part right here is a hole. So you're going to be working one double crochet into each chain across that hole. For a total of four double crochets. And then you're just going to work into all of the regular double crochets normally. So we have our starting stitch. You're going to double crochet in each of the four chains of the hole. Then you're going to double crochet in each of the next 11 double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And again, we're going to double crochet in each of the next four chain stitches. 
just like we were working into a foundation chain. And then we're going to double crochet in the next 11. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way around, double crocheting into all the double crochets and double crocheting into each chain stitch of each hole. And we're still going to wind up with a total of 360 stitches at the end of the round. All right, so I'm back around to the beginning of my row and I'm just gonna slip stitch in the top of my starting stitch. So to finish this little section, I'm going to work two more rows of regular double crochet. So I'm just going to turn my work um, work my starting stitch, whether you want to use the chainless starting double crochet or the chain three, and just double crochet all the way around and then slip stitch into the starting stitch. So I'm going to repeat that row two times. All right, so I have worked a total of two more rounds of plain double crochet. So we have the one round worked into this little um, row of black single crochets. We have two plain rounds, one round with the holes, one round worked into the holes, and then two more plain rounds. So now what I'm going to do is cut my yarn. I'm going to tie off. So now I'm going to take my black yarn and I'm going to repeat this little narrow stripe of black that we worked into the triangles by working two rows of plain single crochet around the top edge here. So I'm going to insert my hook into this last stitch where I tied off. I'm going to pull up a loop of the black yarn and I'm going to chain one. That will count as my first single crochet. And I'm going to turn my work because the last row I worked was facing me. So I just came around um, and the outside of the bag was facing me so I'm going to turn it around And then I'm just going to work single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And then when I get back to the beginning of my round, I'm going to slip stitch in this chain right here that I started with that counts as my first stitch. Just like I did down here with the second round of black single crochet. I'm going to repeat that row two times for a total of two black single crochet rows and that will finish up the top edge of my bag. And I'm just going to crochet over the tails as I go, and as I said, I will complete a total of two rows of single crochet around the top edge of the bag. All right, so I have worked one row of single crochet with the inside of the bag facing me, joined with a slip stitch, then I've worked another round with the outside facing me. And I'm just about to the point where I would normally slip stitch into this first chain that would count as a regular stitch. But instead of doing that, I want a seamless look across the edge of my bag. So I've worked the very last single crochet. I'm gonna pull on the loop on my hook till the tail comes out. Thread that tail onto my yarn needle. And I don't know if you can see this or not because it's black yarn, but Find the very first single crochet of the round, not the chain stitch, but this first single crochet, and insert your needle into it as if you were going to crochet into it, front and back loops. And you're just going to stitch through that stitch right there like you were crocheting into it, that's where you would insert your needle. And I like to do it from front to back, and now you can see we've recreated like the front loop of the top edge of a single crochet. Now we're going to recreate the back loop by going back down where the yarn originally came out. So I'm going down through the top of the last single crochet I worked. Then you're just going to pull on that until that loop you just created is even with the ones on either side of it. And I'm just going to tie a little knot in my yarn and weave in my tail. Alright, so now the top edge of my bag is done and now we're going to make 
the drawstring that goes through all of these holes. All right, so now we're gonna do the drawstring that's going to close our bag. And what I've done here is I've taken each color of yarn, I had five colors total, and I have cut five lengths from each color, approximately 58 to 60 inches long, for a total of 25 lengths of yarn. And I put them all together, about like that, and tied one end of it in a knot. So now what I've done is I have divided them approximately in half, so I make sure I have um, several strands of each color on both sides. And we're going to do a rope twist to make our drawstring because we want kind of um, a multicolored uh, twisted rope uh, drawstring cord. So what we're going to be doing is I've got the knot facing me so that it'll be easier to do the twisting. And then I've got each half of my strands of yarn here. So what we're gonna be doing is you're gonna twist each half in the same direction. So I'm twisting both halves to my right. And then you're going to cross them over in the opposite direction. So I've twisted them to the right and crossed them over to the left. And we're just going to keep repeating this, twisting to the right and then crossing over to the left. And you just want to make sure that they're always well twisted. Because that's what's going to hold your rope together, is the twisting. So we're just twisting in one direction and crossing in the opposite direction. And you just want to make sure all your twists are even and that you can you know, see a lot of colors when you're twisting because that's the whole point. You want to be able to see the colors of the different strands of yarn show up all over the rope. So this is what our cord is essentially going to look like. And if you do this evenly, then your rope will be uh, pretty even. And um, as long as the halves, both halves are well twisted before you cross them over, then this will stay like this. It'll stay in this twisted position and it won't untwist. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I get down to the end of my cord here. All right, so I have twisted the entire rope, and now what I'm gonna do, I have about three inches left, is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna actually untwist it a little bit because I want a little more length on it. And I'm gonna take what's left of this and tie the whole thing in a knot, just like I have it on the other end. And as you can see here, I've got some shorter strands. So I want them to be longer, so I have enough fringe on the end of my rope. So I'm going to do that again. I'm gonna untie it, take the twist back a little bit, and then I can retie so that I've got enough fringe on the ends left. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure about three inches from the knot and I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut this even. And I, my three inches is about right here at the end of this black strand right here. So I'm just going to cut across all those strands to make that even. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. I wanna make it even 
on this side. So I'm going to do the same thing and just trim all the ends here so that they're straight and that they're pretty much exactly the same length as the end on the other side. And actually it ended up being a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to trim this one a little more to make them even. All right, there we go. So that is my drawstring. And it's fairly long, about 48 inches total if you include the, um, the tassels on the ends. And now we're gonna thread this into our bag. So you can just start at any place on the bag, just pick a hole, take one end of your drawstring and go down through that hole, up through the next, down through the next, up through the next, and so on and so on until you get back around to where you started. So I've just got two holes left, and as you can see, at 48 inches, it's just long enough that when you open it all the way, you've still got enough room left on your drawstring to um, not have the drawstrings pull out of the holes. But when we want to tie it, just pull on that drawstring and it cinches the bag closed. Then you can tie it, and you've got these cute little tassels on the ends. Those are kind of decorative, but they also serve the purpose of um, being what's left at the end, because if you tried to make this a finished end with this kind of rope twist, it just wouldn't work. So here's the bag itself. That's finished now, and it looks a little limp because there's nothing in it, and it's lying on a table, but that is how the drawstring goes into the bag. And now we need to make the strap. All right, so now we're going to make straps for our bag and I'm going to make mine more of a backpack style. So I'm gonna make backpack straps. If you want to make it as a tote or a crossbody bag or whatever, then you can make your straps however you like. But I'm going to make backpack straps for mine. And I have my sport weight yarn here in the gray and I've got it doubled. So I'm gonna be crocheting with that. I have my crochet hook and I've also got four metal D-rings and these are going to make the straps adjustable so that if somebody with um, wider shoulders puts it on and carries it, then it's going to be adjustable so that you, know, that you can make the straps longer if you need to. So I have four of those, and these are readily available at any craft store, any, almost any Walmart has these, and they're very inexpensive. So one problem that people often run into when making straps for a crocheted bag is that crocheted fabric has a decent amount of stretch in it. And for most applications, that's fine, but with a bag strap, you need it to be sturdy enough to carry the weight of whatever's in the bag. So what I'm gonna do is work with my yarn doubled, and I'm also going to use the same size hook as I was already using. So then that way, the uh, stitches are rather tight, and they will be stronger and be able to carry the weight. And by the way, these are one inch D-rings, meaning the length of this straight part right here on the inside is one inch, so you can feed a one inch strap through the D-rings. So I'm going to start by making a little chain here. I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to skip the first two and I'm going to single crochet in one, two, three, and four. Like so, that's my first row. Now I'm gonna chain one and turn. I'm gonna single crochet in the next th three stitches. And I'm going to single crochet in the top of this chain one from the row below. 
like so. And we're always going to be counting that chain one at the beginning of every row as a single crochet. So we will have a total of five stitches after every row. Again, we're just going to chain one turn, single crochet in the next three, and single crochet in the chain from the row below. And again, that first chain in the row always counts as one stitch and you will always have five. So you're just gonna keep repeating this row until your strap is long enough. Now this is pretty strong because not only is the yarn doubled, but we're using the same size hook as we originally were. So we're using a smaller hook with thicker yarn and that makes a stronger, sturdier fabric because it's a thicker fabric and it's more dense. So you can make your straps whatever length you want. I'm gonna make mine about 40 inches long. But if you want to make them longer, then you can totally do that. So just keep repeating this row, single crocheting back and forth until your strap measures the length that you want. And we're gonna be making two straps because it's a backpack. So you need um, a strap for each side. If you wanna make it as a different style of bag, put different kind of straps on it, then go right ahead. You can make your straps however long or however many that you want on your bag. So I have made both of my straps here and I have blocked them so that they don't twist because naturally it's gonna have some twist in it. It's gonna to wanna to go kinda of like that. So I have steam blocked it and wet blocked it just to make sure that it lies nice and flat. And now we're going to go ahead and attach them with our D-rings. So this is the front of the bag where we have the um, tie centered. So now we're going to flip it over to the back. And we're going to attach these D-rings to loop the straps through to make them adjustable. So I have my gray yarn and I've still got it doubled and I'm going to thread it through my yarn needle and cut about a yard in length. And what we're gonna do here is sew on the D-rings. And what I want to do is untie the drawstring so that I can open up the top of the bag and get to the inside so I can have my hand in there. And what I want to do is kind of whip stitch over the, the straight part of the D-ring. And I have positioned this on a gray triangle so that it doesn't show up as much. But the one on the other side is going to be on a blue triangle. So you don't have to worry about it too, too much. You just want them so that if this is the center of the back, you want them to both be equal distance from each side of the center. So I'm going to start with this one, and we're going to put two D-rings on each side here. So I'm going to leave a few inches of a tail on the back of the fabric. And I'm just going to be encasing this straight side of the D-ring with my stitches, like so. And before I go any further, I'm just gonna tie the tail in a knot with the yarn on my needle. And then I'm just gonna keep stitching this down all the way across. Just trying to make sure that it is very secure. And I want my the straight side of my D-ring to be basically covered by the yarn. And you also want to make sure that you stitch across the whole width of the straight side of the D-ring because if you don't, then the D-ring will be able to slide back and forth and I don't want that. I want it to be stable and secure in one position. I'm gonna just squeeze one more stitch on there, just to make sure it doesn't move. There we go. So it doesn't slide back and forth, but it can still 
rotate up and down, which is what we want. So now we need a second D ring, and this one's going to be positioned just above the one we just did. And because I did this first one right at the baseline of this black stripe that goes all the way around, I'm going to do the next one right on the, like, right up against the top edge of that black stripe. We just want it just above the second, the, the original uh, D ring, but not, like, up here. We want it close, but not, like, directly over the top, and close, but not, you know, up too far. We just want it about a quarter inch from the center of this metal D-ring, the, the center of the, the rod, to the center of this rod. You want them fairly closely spaced. So I'm not even going to cut my thread. I'm just going to move it up a bit to stitch the next one. And I'm going to stitch this one down just like I did with the first one, all the way across. All right, so I've made it across the second D ring. They're both attached like so. So now I'm going to turn my fabric over, tie my yarn on my needle in a knot with the original tail that I started with. Then I'm going to weave both of these in a little ways and trim the extra. So now I've got my pair of D-rings attached on this side and I'm going to position the other pair on the other side equally spaced from the center and I will attach those in the same manner that I did these. So here are my straps, and what I've done here is I've left the tail on the, uh, the one end with the foundation chain, and I've woven in the tail on the end where I just tied off after the end of my row. So I have two straps here, and what we're gonna do is attach the straps down here at the base of the bag. Now if you can see right here, if I fold this up, this is our hexagon that we started with. So I'm going to place each strap right about here on the base where I've got, here's the center of my hexagon, and I've got one triangle on each side pointing out. There's still a whole row of triangles up here. I'm going to center each strap like that on the base of the bag. Right, th This is the very edge between the hexagon and the beginning of the rows. So I've got my tail here from the foundation chain. I'm going to thread it through my yarn needle. And I'm going to position this just where I want it. And I'm going to stitch this down through the inside of the bag. And a simple whip stitch should hold this pretty well. So I'm going to whip stitch through the bag and through the bottom edge of the strap. And you just want to make sure this is very secure because you don't want the straps to come unattached while you're carrying it. So just make sure that all your stitches are taken into quite a bit of fabric. You don't want your stitches to be taken into just a little strand of yarn here and a little strand of yarn there. So just take decent sized stitches and make sure that they're tight when you pull them through. I think this one's trying to go through a knot where I was seaming triangles. All right, so that's the last stitch for this strap. It is fairly securely attached, and I'm just going to tie a knot 
and I'm going to weave in this tail. And then I will do the same thing in the same place on the other side of the bag with the foundation chain end of the second strap. So now the straps are attached to the bottom of the bag and the final step is to thread them through the D-rings. So what you want to do is straighten them out, make sure they're not twisted. And then what we're going to do is lift up both D-rings, thread the strap up through both of them, and then we're going to make this, the end of the strap go over the one on top and then back under through the one on the bottom. And when you pull this tight, especially when there's weight in the bag and you're carrying it, this will be pretty secure to keep that strap at the length that you adjust it to. So if you want to adjust it, then you can just pull that top D-ring up, tighten by pulling on the uh, strap, the back of the strap, and then pull on the end to make it shorter. Same on the other side, we're just going to straighten it out. Thread up through both D-rings and then thread back down through the one on the bottom. Like so. So now you have a cute geometric backpack with adjustable straps and a drawstring closure. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this bag, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.